So in terms of the questions, please, if you can uh, keep to the format by mentioning your name and affiliation um, before you ask your question. And please keep the questions very brief. So, yes, Juka. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, a very brief question uh, to Andy about the uh, uh, poverty elasticities of growth. Uh, those might also depend on the, um, on the initial deepness of poverty. So have you looked at the uh, poverty elasticity of, 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 or the elasticity of poverty cap or the squared poverty cap to growth? So should we take a few before? Uh, my, my question is for uh, uh, Andrea, uh, and, but it, it's uh, really to uh, researchers in general. Uh, when you talk about uh, when you talk about the Gini coefficient, which Gini? Is it an income Gini? Is it a consumption Gini? Is it? Uh, uh, Pre-tax, post-tax, is it per uh, adult equivalent, is it per household member, is it per household? It, it does make a difference. And I always feel uncomfortable uh, when in practically 100% of the cases, people do not specify. And also, I am very worried that in many instances, they don't use consistent definitions of genie. But this is a general point, but I think it's an important point. Uh, that then on, uh, on the substance, um, I think you, you're absolutely uh, right that uh, there is a uh, somewhat of an institutional vacuum when it comes to uh, social protection schemes uh, in Africa. But I don't think it's as bad as uh, you, uh, you implied. For instance, I would uh, add uh, a number of uh, institutions that have been quite successful. Uh, BRAC in Uganda uh, has been extremely successful. It's a, a Bangladesh uh, uh, program that covers something like, I think, 200,000 uh, uh, farmers. Uh, uh, it uh, trains entrepreneurs, it provides uh, scales to uh, young ladies and so on. The uh, uh, Ethiopian uh, uh, safety net and uh, public works program has also been uh, quite successful. So th there are some uh, uh, institutions uh, uh, which uh, uh, m might, might be mentioned in addition to the uh, ones that you mentioned in uh, South Africa. And then finally, uh, in terms of the relevance of Latin American institutions for Africa, I feel very strongly that uh, uh, both the uh, Bolsa Familia in, in Brazil, as well as uh, Progresa and uh, Oportunidades in uh, Mexico, uh, could successfully be uh, transplanted to sub-Saharan Africa. And we know that uh, uh, Oportunidades in uh, Mexico has been responsible for a, a, a major redu reduction in Gini. Um, I don't know if anybody measured it exactly, but for the whole of Mexico in the last 10, 12 years, the Gini coefficient has gone down by eight points. And of course, for both poor, both our familia, you mentioned uh, that it was responsible for something like a four-point reduction in uh, in Gini. So, so these are my comments on. Yes, please. Thank you. My my name is Steven from the University of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and my question goes to Cornia. You seem to mention that inequality remained constant over, especially in the sub-Saharan Africa. And for this, I also note that in Tanzania, for example, inequality as measured by Gini coefficient has remained almost constant over the last 10 or so years. But at, at, in one of the slides, you seem to suggest that uh, some measures to reduce inequality. 
I would like to know why you are making this uh, this uh, comments in the sense that is the inequality that you have you have observed is it too high maybe to have like significant impact on poverty reduction because as you mentioned that it has been it has remained constant over the period of time why are you making some uh, suggestion on how to reduce the inequality is it too high maybe for the growth to have significant impact on uh, poverty reduction thank you so oh okay so uh, yes more My name is uh, Jeremiah Mwabu from University of Nairobi. My comment is on uh, South African uh, paper. Uh, what you show there is um, that you are able to explain all the di uh, uh, differences in poverty across um, groups. Uh, so, in fact, your model can be used to eliminate those differences and even to eliminate poverty. But when you look at your specification, all the variables there are endogenous. For example, location. People are in slum areas because they are poor. Okay, it's not the slum which is making people poor, although also that is true. Okay, so you have to recognize that problem. Then you have the number of children. Okay, that is a debatable issue. Okay, uh, what the research shows is that uh, the higher the family size, the larger the family size, the higher the probability of being poor. Okay, but children are also a choice variable. Okay, so you also cannot take that for granted. Then your key variable is education. Okay, you are, do not show the mechanism through which education affects poverty. Okay, and what we know from the studies on uh, unemployment among the, among the youth is uh, the highly educated youth are the, the ones who have high incidences of uh, unemployment. So the, the more education you have, the more likely to be unemployed, and therefore you have no income. So everything else being, being the same, okay, education makes you, in Africa, makes you poor. So it's, so it's a curious uh, finding for South Africa, where actually youth unemployment rate is very high. Okay, among the educated, to find that education is the inducing uh, poverty. So, so you, need, uh, you need a better structural model to do that in the composition. Thank you very much. Okay, so if you want to respond. To... <coughs> okay, just one uh, comment from Yuka um, about the poverty elasticity, the growth elasticity of poverty. Uh, yes, those were elasticities just of headcounts of poverty. African poverty we know is quite deep. And that's part of the reason why the elasticity is probably quite low. Uh, certainly, we should look at it. Certainly, I should look at it for other measures of poverty. Uh, yes, I completely agree. Now, um, on Eric's uh, question. Now, the data which we have, sorry, I went a little bit too fast, but I covered the huge area because the chairman is very tough. So <laughs> I, I had to cover a huge area in a few minutes. So, so the, the Gini coefficient, which are reported in WID and POPCAL, these are average household income per capita. Nobody knows whether they are pre-tax or post-tax. These are probably post-tax for those who pay taxes, which is probably 10% or 5% of the population, because m most of the people they are not subject to direct taxation, and indirect taxes are not accounted in, in that. Now, the new data which the World Bank is... Uh, uh, giving us these are consumption data, so which will create as an additional problem, which normally you solve either by standardizing or by including dummy variables in regression. And so the problem of the heterogeneity is uh, either you, you recompute, you know, so you take the average difference, and you know, or basically you use a dummy variable in regression, and normally the dummy variable for the consumption variable, uh, consumption genie, would be negative, so they would lower. Now, on the social protection, I think, you know, I, I, looked, I basically read two papers. One, a compilation from the World Bank, which says now there is a, is a sort of an inventory of all the new programs which are available. And then <clears throat> I read Armando Barrientos' interesting paper, which basically argues that uh, the Middle Africa model has, uh, is, uh, 
expanding, and probably I agree with you, it, it has quite a, a scope for expanding. But the only one which is really available at the moment is the Southern African one, particularly the pension and children transfers. <coughs> and that is uh, not by mistake, because the system was available to the whites. So when apartheid finished, then the system has been extended to everybody else. So the institutions pre-existed. And then these are also state-funded in uh, Southern Africa, and then in the case of uh, Middle Africa, they are mainly donor-funded, which raises an issue of uh, sustainability. Now, I, th I, I agree with you. I think that uh, uh, nobody believed, including myself, that Oportunidades and Bolsa Escola would have had this, such a large impact. But then we are quite convinced that uh, they did. Now, state capacity in Brazil is, uh, or in Mexico is higher, but then we do see that uh, in also in some, some of the African countries, like in Southern Africa, they just transfer the money without giving the money, just uh, straight to the bank accounts. So, now, on the colleague from uh, Dar es Salaam, now I don't remember all because I, I, I have 28 trends in mind, so I, but I think that Tanzania uh, had rising inequality. So, uh, so if it did add rising inequality, then one of the reasons is that uh, uh, I think is among the options uh, discussed this morning. Well, first of all, if it rises, I mean, the poverty elasticity of growth falls, and that is not good for poverty. And then it may be more. I mean, I mean uh, higher inequality probably discourages growth. And I mean, I, I do tend to be un Caldorian in this respect. So, so why do we recommend policies to reduce inequality? Because it's not good for poverty, it's not good for growth. And uh, uh, I mean, this is, now I don't know in the specific case of uh, Tanzania, but this is what the literature tells us. And, uh, and the, the, the measures, I mean, I wonder why, but I mean, one of the reasons is that uh, in Tanzania has uh, gold. So perhaps in Tanzania there is an element uh, uh, of uh, natural resources which distort the distribution, but that, that I don't know it for sure. But the data, tend, if, uh, we will look at it now. It tends to show that Tanzania, which had a very good name in terms of uh, distribution, now has uh, shown during the last 10, 15 years a uh, rise. Hello. Questions on the Delta 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 Delta. Well, uh, thank you very much for the comments. Uh, yes, in, this, in this type of approach, in general, this type of decomposition, uh, we analyze the statistical association between uh, the household characteristics and uh, the probability of being poor. So it's not, uh, we don't, uh, there is no causality here. In fact, there are some endogeneity. There might be also some reverse causality. So somehow, sometimes being poor is what uh, makes you to have, for example, more children or, uh, or live in certain areas, etc. Uh, but what is clear is that there is a high co uh, correlation between these characteristics. For example, in the case of the number of children, uh, I think it's, uh, what I'm capturing here is uh, the, the, the main effect is the fact that if you have more children, the, this increases the needs of the household, so the per capita income uh, falls, and probably this is the main effect, but it could be also the effect that uh, some households have, uh, for the fact that they are poor, or maybe they have different cultural values and they uh, prefer to have more children, or maybe they have lower access to uh, plan, uh, uh, family planning, and then uh, for that reason they have more children. So uh, I cannot distinguish between these, these effects. For that, I have to rely in general on the literature. So what is uh, the, the literature? Because you have to make very specific uh, analysis of each of these causes. You cannot treat them all of them in one single structural model. I mean, I, I don't know such a model. Uh, the problem here, and, and this is the difference with the white, black and white uh, differential, that there is not much literature looking at different ethnic uh, differences in any of these aspects in, uh, in, in South Africa, despite the fact I think they are very, very uh, important. But basically, for the uh, economic explanation of what is going on, you have to rely on the, lead, the, the empirical evidence that have analyzed each specific factor, uh, the labor market, uh, fertility, uh, etc. Regarding, for example, the, the, the specific case you mentioned of education, I mean, here, the, the, the high contribution of education to explain the gap uh, comes from two facts. One is that 
COSA and Sulu, they have lower levels of education. And, uh, I didn't show the, 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 the summary statistics, but you can see that they have lower years of attained uh, education. And the second one is that the coefficient that I estimate of the, if, uh, the association between education and poverty is large. So in, the, in South Africa, having higher education reduces the probability of being poor. If it were the other case that you mentioned, that uh, having higher education uh, increases the probability of being poor, the contribution should be negative because equalizing education should improve this group, should uh, uh, increase the poverty of these groups, but it, it happens right the opposite. So uh, this type of effects is captured precisely by the coefficient. The coefficient is telling you how, because you, have, you can have a, a very, very, very large uh, gap in characteristics, but if this is not important for poverty, so the coefficient is nearly zero, uh, the contribution will be zero. Thank you. Thank you. So we have about 10 minutes um, before lunch, so we'll take another round of questions. And then. <coughs> yeah. Thank you, Stefan Leiderer from the German Development Institute. Just coming back to the last point, and I'm, I'm not really sure I'm yet able to formulate it into a question, but I still have a, a substantial worry about the, the exogenous or endogenous nature of these variables. And, uh, because basically, if we say, if we assume it, all these uh, controls in your regression are exogenous, then basically there wouldn't be a need to uh, look at ethnic uh, differentials because you, you're able to explain the differences in poverty by all these household characteristics. So assume if they were exogenous, then there's no need to look at ethnicity, I would say. Now, if we assume they're endogenous, what do we learn? All we learn that is the Sulus are poorer than the Xhosa, but what, what do we find out beyond that? So, I, mean, I think it is important whether we consider the controls as exogenous or endogenous uh, in your regressions. And depending on, well, either side we decide, I'm not sure what, what do we learn. In either case, I'm not sure whether we really need to look at the ethnic clients or whether there's other uh, issues that are more important than. Because either, in either case, we, only, we learn nothing, or in the other case, we don't need the ethnic differentiation, I think. Or uh, I might get it wrong there. But maybe you can comment on that. Okay, there is a front. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, again, addressing the last paper as well. Um, I, I was wondering whether you could comment on uh, the impact of direct poverty reduction strategies uh, that are being implemented by government and whether that has had an effect and whether you picked that up. And then I think uh, the point uh, the last speaker was making, the person who raised the question, I think the case of the Sutu and, uh, and Tswan and Sisutu is important to retain as a comparator because I think the location of the largest parts of the Tswan and Sisutu populations would be in provincial areas that are much better endowed in a whole number of uh, economic activities, whether it's manufacturing, mining, and so forth and whether that may, may account for the large difference between those two groups and uh, Koza and uh, the Zulus, given that the structure of the economies in the provinces that they found in is very different from the others. Thank you. There are any more questions or comments? So, I, Carlos, you have the <coughs> pleasure of taking more, both questions. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much again for, for the question. Well, uh, here, I mean, the uh, ethnicity is uh, relevant. Uh, and, 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 and because, I mean, if you, have, if you find that one group is much more poorer than the other, I think this means it's relevant. The question is why it's relevant. It's because they have lower characteristics, so they live in the poorest areas, for example, of the country, by chance or by history, whatever, or it's because even when they have the same characteristics, the returns of these characteristics in terms of uh, poverty, uh, through the labor market, through the social programs, etc., uh, are worse than the other group. So this is basically uh, the idea. If you, I mean, the, the differential is large. So if I found a, <coughs> a small differential, I would say looking at ethnicity is irrelevant. When you, you find that there is a huge differential, because 50% of higher poverty with these high levels of poverty, I think is very, very important. Uh, I think, uh, in, 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 a, in a characteristic that shouldn't be associated with uh, poverty, because 
probably we, we will agree ethnicity should not be one of these characteristics that uh, make you, uh, or that justifies that some people are poorer than the other. I think it, it, uh, it's important to, look, to have a look at that. Then the question is, what is the nature of this uh, differential? And this is what the papers also try to, to disentangle with the limitations, obviously, of, uh, of the approach. But uh, I think it's the first attempt to look at these uh, uh, differentials. And so the difference can come because they have uh, lower or poorer characteristics or because of the impact of these characteristics. What I found is that in, it's, they mostly come, I, 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 with some exceptions, they mostly come from differences in characteristics. So it's most uh, a compositional effect. And I think it's interesting to identify which characteristics because, and this is relevant for political analysis, even if you cannot extract from here because of this endogeneity problems, uh, et cetera, and the assumptions in general of this type of counterfactual analysis, uh, I, I, I think that the information is relevant for policy analysis because, for example, if you identify education is the main issue here, clearly it points out that uh, policies reducing the gap in education will be probably more effective than uh, policies uh, addressing other issues. Uh, if you find that uh, its location, what is relevant, maybe these claims for uh, local community or lo uh, regional policies trying to increase the development of those areas that are left behind and that, and, and that have our uh, ethnicity, ethnic bias. So, uh, I think you have, can extract some general lesson for policy, not very specific, I'm not evaluating, cannot evaluate the importance of one specific program on this differential. For that, you need a different framework, a different methodology, uh, and probably different data. So, uh, but I think you can learn uh, about what is going on. Uh, for example, comparing what I found in uh, using this approach in different countries, you see that in some countries, geography is not very much important, so it's not uh, that People, some uh, ethnic minorities are being concentrated in the poorest or remote areas of the country. In some countries, it's very, very important. Obviously, education tends to be important, but most in developing countries, that, for example, in, in, in developed countries, etc. So I, I think you have some, some lessons. Obviously, you don't explain the whole gap here. And, and as I said before, you have to complement this, well, for example, with analysis of the wage gap in the labor market to see if there is a premium of belonging to one ethnicity or the other. You need to compare this with the analysis of the, attain, the, the, the achievement in education to see if some groups are uh, receiving lower quality education or not, etc. So, uh, I'm sorry, and regarding the, the, the case of the specific case of the, 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 the location, uh, they, uh, <coughs> these groups are highly concentrated in certain areas. In fact, I didn't use uh, the province as a variable because uh, one of the assumptions of this counterfactual analysis is the common support. So you need uh, enough people of all groups in all areas to, to have this kind of analysis, otherwise it makes no sense. Uh, I used the, the degree of urbanization, reality, etc. But what is important is that uh, so the, the, the effect of this uh, concentration in uh, specific, for example, in mining provinces or in <laughs> provinces with more industry or more agriculture, etc., uh, I would expect that to be important through the unexplained effect because it means that if you have a certain level of education living in these provinces, you will have higher returns to education. And, and living in this one, you will have lower returns of education. But the unexplained effect it's not much important to explain the gap in poverty and in persistent poverty. So probably that is not an important fact. Maybe it could be to explain, for example, the higher uh, temporary poverty of COSA, for example. That I can explain because most is unexplained. Some part of this can come, for example, for returns in education or returns to, to other values. There, there may be room that this might be. But when you explain, most of them, uh, some of this effect can be captured because also these provinces have higher education, they have uh, more urban areas, etc. And, and this I, uh, I capture in this. Well, once again, thank you very much um, <coughs> to all of us uh, who have been able to stay. Uh, but I think we all agree that we've had three very stimulating presentations. So I'd like you all to join us in thanking our three presenters. <laughs>